welcome back. So, hey guys, hope there are some people out there checking this out. I am going to be talking today um, about probably the most confusing sound pack that I've seen from Ableton for a long time, and I'm really hoping to clarify it so that you can understand more about how it works. I can understand more how it works, and we can uh, use it to make music. So that's, we're continuing on uh, the Inspired by Nature sound pack. So you need Ableton 11 to check this out. This is a new sound pack with Ableton 11. And um, it's, it's just a set of Macs for live devices. Some of them are instruments, some of them are effects. We're going to see that here. And last week we had talked about the tree tone, uh, which is kind of a fractal oriented um, instrument. We talked about bouncy notes and emitter, which were both uh, kind of gravitational, uh, sort of mass-related, particle-oriented instruments and effects. And then today, I'm going to talk about the collection of three different vector tools. So there's two instruments. There's vector FM, and there is, uh, what's the other one, vector grain. And then there's an effect, which is vector delay. So I'm going to show you what's vector about them. What does vector mean? And then just understanding that principle will help you understand, uh, you know, what grain and FM and the delay do. I mean, they're, they're probably to most people you recognize grain is, is some kind of like grain synthesizer. FM is some kind of M FM synthesizer and delay is some kind of delay module. Anyway, I'm going to be able to switch over here to my push every now and then and uh, we let's get started over here on uh, the software and take a look at this all right so I'm going to load up the effect which is over here so I'm gonna go down to packs and I'm gonna scroll down to inspired by nature here and this person, Dylan Baston, I uh, created these. And you can go to dylanbaston.com. And they have published some useful and insightful manuals about each of these. So under audio effects, we'll see vector delay. That's one of the things we'll be talking about today. Other instruments, you see vector FM and vector grain. So let's load up vector grain first. And I'm just going to select a MIDI track here. I'm just going to drag that on there. And let's take a look at what this whole concept of vector is really about. So since vector grain is a vector-based uh, synth, we need to have some kind of sample in there. But, you know, it really could be anything. Um, let's just go ahead and get some kind of sample loaded in there. They've got some samples here. load up the sound here so you can hear these there you go all right see so these are just some samples right oh that one sounds interesting so let's just drag that down this could be any sample it could be a, like a kick drum hit could be whatever and so now what we see is we've got the sample loaded in there. And this particle here is just basically going to, right now it's not really having any effect, but it's going to have an effect on the playback of this sample. There's some very subtle, very subtle sounds coming out of it right now. So the whole principle of the vector devices here, vector grain, vector FM, and uh, the vector delay are very similar. There's this, there's this vector display right here. And the vector display is um, basically showing you um, a sort of X, Y set of parameters for um, this little particle and we can create more particles right create however many particles we want and each one of these particles is going to play back in our 
just zooming in there so you can see better. So each one of these particles is having an effect on playing back this sample. Now I'm going to bring the grains down basically to zero and that means now that it's just responding to notes that are being played. So you can see on like overhead if I go ahead and I play my push now only when I'm triggering a MIDI note am I getting uh, a note from the software. So let's go back to the software here and look at more of what this does. All right, so I lost my sample there. So, oops, I guess I have to have at least one grain in there in order to see the interface. So, I'm going to actually shut this off just for a second and so we can look at the other elements here. These five rotaries down here, this is really like one half of what the vector concept is. One half is this display with the particles bouncing around. The other half is these values. So, you know, how are these particles moving left and right? How are they moving vertically? How far are they from the center? Uh, I think this is velocity oriented and this is size oriented. So the velocity of the particle that's moving and then um, the, the relative size of it. And then what do those different values actually affect? So here we have the horizontal location is impacting pan. Vertical uh, location is impacting filter uh, cutoff. And then how far it is away from the center that is changing the location of the grain, for the sample for the grain. So all five of these are giving us the opportunity to change uh, how the sound comes out of vector grain, how that uh, sample is, this sample over here is being played based on those values right here. So you can hear if you're listening on uh, stereo that there's slight panning. Now this particle is not moving a lot and let's look at why. So if we go in here there are a few different elements and let me just go back to this. So uh, velocity, magnetism, attractor, and flow field. So if we turn on the flow field we get this sort of set of um, I don't know what they're called really, but there's there they basically you can you can kind of click and draw on them to kind of create paths. And as you create those paths, this path would manipulate how the particle moves, right? So you can see how that kind of has an effect. Flow field uh, doesn't have to follow that path. You can make some adjustments here, I think, to how strictly it follows them. I think this is, you can think of this as sort of gravitational, right? I'm going to turn off flow field and focus on attractor because the attractor is right here. This white square in the middle. And the attractor is basically sort of, you can think of it as a source of gravitational pull. So if I've got um, a lot of strength here, you'll see that pretty much my particle wants to hang around dead center. Whereas if I have almost no strength, the particle like doesn't even hang around. So if I, if I pull the strength actually down to the left here, I get a negative value, which is repelling rather than attracting the particle. So let me go in here see where our particle comes from. I think I might have broken it. <laughs> Something's gone wrong with our with our demo here. So what I'm going to do is just for the sake of time, I'm going to reload that instrument. So this is vector grain. And go grab that sample. Really any sample will do for the purposes of making a cool sound. 
And so in here, I've got a particle bouncing around. I'm going to create two or three different grains. So you can see now we've got three different samples, three different grains happening on the sample. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the horizontal axis. Well, I mean, that really does make sense to have that be pan. The vertical. Say reverse. How far away it is from the center. Uh, that'll be... Hmm. I don't know. Again, maybe. The velocity, I guess that could be gain. We'll change that to pitch. So now I've got these different values affecting the sound. I can see some of them are reversing, right? And I can force things away by setting a negative attractor strength, see? And then I can bring them close in with higher attractor strength. Just a light attractive strength kind of allows them to bounce around. So here's where I can manipulate. Let me turn that off for now. Down here, this last icon, which is like three dots. This is where you can manipulate how the particles are created. So whether they're charged uh, blue or uh, red, or I guess orange, yellow, is basically positive and negative. Um, so you can decide, you know, right now they're basically half of them are being positive, half of them are negative, but you can decide that, you know, you want almost all of them to be one or the other. Mass is going to be basically how much is gravity of that attractor over here going to be, uh, working on that. So the more mass that the particle has, the more the attractor is going to attract it or repel it. Uh, the edge, you can have it bounce, clip, or wrap. So that's kind of what happens when the ball gets to the edge of the vector area. Uh, randomize your mass. So you can, you can randomize that a little bit. Uh, spawn area, I guess you can set a specific, specific spot like so where, you know, every particle that I make is going to be spawned right there. And right now there's very low attraction in my attractor, so I'm going to boost up my attractor. So if I were to take something like this and I were to just add like a standard uh, reverb to it, go to my audio effects. Take a symbol, all reverb, bring that down here. All right, so now I've got this heavily reverbed sound. I'm going to go ahead and just program a simple beat over here on my push. So I'm going to go ahead and add device because I want to have something I can gate with. I'm just going to create like a very basic 808. Just the 808 core kit, right? Load that up. And just gonna make one bar loop. So I got this kit going on, right? Now I'm gonna come back to my software, back to this channel, turn off the kick, add a gate over here, which is under dynamics. Gonna add a gate to this. And down here, I'm going to go ahead and set side chain to my 808. And I can see now that the gate is, is hearing that kick, but the threshold isn't allowing sound through. 
So I've got this like, it's really super stuttered. Let the release come out a little bit more. All right, so now I've got this gated effect on this. And so I'm creating something highly rhythmic. But in the background, that pad sound is, you know, being basically created through these laws of physics, how these particles with their mass and uh, the gravity of the, um, the uh, attractor and such, how all that's interacting to create uh, these different grains. And then those grains are running through this reverb into a gate. And now I can go back and I can look at my push and I can basically change this gating pattern. If I want to go back to the software and just tighten up that gate a little bit so it's more rhythmic. No release there. Now when I'm over here and programming my drums, I like this kind of effect because it's rhythmic and one of the most difficult things to do in composition or in performance is to create like uh, a something that's rhythmic something that has that effect of like keeping time when you don't want to use the kick maybe you don't want to spend the kick or the snare but you want people to be feeling the beat but then doing it with a pad is really common but having a pad that sounds interesting is kind of evolving kind of changing it's actually pretty hard to do that and uh you know if you're using just like a typical subtractive synth or something like that so I really like this approach of um, setting up an instrument like the grain, like the vector grain or a pad or whatever, and then gating a kick to create some kind of rhythmic pattern here. So uh, that's it basically for this vector grain. I think I've given you a good demonstration of how it, how it works. And we're going to look at uh, the vector FM and we're going to look at uh, the vector delay and see a bit how they work. So I can come here to my vector grain and I'm gonna go ahead and load a different device. So I'm gonna go down to my packs, down to Inspired by Nature. There you go, to Instruments, and I can find Vector FM. And then I'm just gonna load up a Vector FM. All right, and then let's go. So now I'm getting like a totally different sound because now it's Vector FM, but still gated, which is awesome. So like, you know, this would be a great tool for building a riser. It's crazy. It sounds just like a, like a siren. I have to check, make sure there's not a siren outside my house. So if I were to go back to this, this drum pattern, switch it, say, yeah, we're on 16th. So let's take a look at what this uh, FM synth is doing over here. So, let's just stop it for a sec. That's crazy. It's just like a siren. It sounds in my headphones like there's a siren outside my, my house. It's all going through the reverb still. So let's see what's this doing, right? So we've got Vector FM is is doing 
FM synthesis. So if you know how FM synthesis works, you know that there's this relationship between carriers and operators. So the number of particles is the same. It's just this time, instead of the particles uh, defining grains within a sample, like a grains synth, these uh, are running these same five elements into aspects of an FM synthesizer. So right here we've got filter cutoff is the horizontal uh, axis. Vertical axis is the carrier speed in hertz. How far away it is from the center is our panning. I'm not sure what M hertz is. I guess modulator hertz. Uh, what the modulator is. Um, so you can also, I think here, um, force these pitch changes into a scale. So uh, you know, if you go with a major scale, for example. You can hear how it kind of auto-tunes all of the variations into a, a major scale. Could change the carrier to soft. Could just turn it to octaves. Right, because if you had picked uh, zero voices here, then it winds up playing MIDI. Let me go ahead and turn off the gate for right now. Go ahead and mute that. And you can see how it's producing three particles within my vector FM. And those particles start to move based on uh, where, whoops, based on where the um, particles are moving in these five values down here, these five parameters, how those particles are affecting the FM sound. So FM or vector FM is an instrument just like uh, vector grain was. They're both synthesizers. And you can use them to create super lush pads, uh, evolving sounds. Sorry, I have a dis, uh, broken connection there. Um, you can create all kinds of sounds with them, but I think the most valuable thing for me here is in creating really lush evolving sounds. So sounds that are going to change throughout the course of my performance or my, um, my composition. And I think for performance, how would I perform with these? I would start grabbing these controls from the Vector FM um, and turn these into uh, macros that I could then kind of twist while I'm playing or while I'm recording. Now, the last vector tool is called uh, Vector Delay, and it's an audio effect because it's just a delay. So we can actually drag that in here on top of, I'm going to go ahead and just mute this ballad reverb here. And got my FM there happening. Now, the thing is that this delay is I might uh, it might be hard to hear the delay through that so let's go with something a little more uh, static one thing that we had talked about last week is this uh, tree tone I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down here I like the tree tone uh, because come on open up tree tone for me there it is I like tree tone because of this little uh, grain feature. I'm going to turn the wind all the way down and turn this rain up. I like, I love the way that this fractal pattern can develop these uh, kind of random rhythms. But this will be this will be much better to be looking at a delay. So let's see. I'm going to turn the rain down so we get. 
fewer particles. So let's see what's happening here in the delay. So typical delay tools, you know, how long do you want the delay to be? Um, you can even change the pitch of the delays so that, you know, whatever the delayed signal is, is actually um, off pitch. That's kind of interesting. You can reverse the delays, which is really cool. But basically, the sound is coming out of tree tone here into the vector delay, and this particle and its properties, which are down here, these five same five controls that we've been using on vector FM and vector grain, are the same five you have here. They determine the pan or the filter hertz or whatever you can you know choose. That's going to be the time. Uh, the velocity could be um, pitch. So you get this very like unexpected sound, which I think would be perfect for any kind of sound design where you're trying to do uh, sound design for like some kind of spooky tense, you know, like in a video game or in a movie or TV show, something that you want to use to create anxiety or stress. Um, this kind of like randomized delay where you're not sure where it's going to come from could be could be super effective. I really love this tree tone, but I don't want to get uh, so far off the topic. I want to just kind of give you a little bit of a general overview of how I envision using these. Um, so for composition, I would drag in a sample to vector grain or uh, create a, maybe look at one of the presets for vector FM and get something kind of pad sounding and then I would use the vector elements to make that evolve, to make it change, to try to create um, a more unpredictable and textured sound, right? That's how I would use it in my, um, in my writing where I want to create some kind, of, uh, some kind of ambient effect. In terms of performance, I think this would be really great for gating, uh, any kind of risers. I mean, that, that FM, uh, the vector FM um, synth kind of creating that siren sound a few minutes ago was like, you know, perfect for risers. If you put a gate on that, like a trance gate it, it kind of effect, and you're building up 16th to 32nd notes in advance of a drop, really effective for performance. And you could have that control over... Uh, elements of of the um, of the kind of background sound before the gating, and that would mean that you could use it, you know, to create risers at different points in your composite in your performance, but they wouldn't really sound the same. It wouldn't sound like you were just using static static like uh, stock push button risers because the sounds are evolving; they're changing all the time. Um, so those, those are, uh, two options again for composition. I could see this being really, uh, especially the grain and FM being really useful for creating, uh, just layers, you know, even if your main instrument is piano, but you want to give it a, a, a haunting ambiance or you, uh, your main instrument is a Rhodes or some kind of electric piano or a keyboard or an organ or something and you want to add layers in that are going to give depth and perspective to to your melody then using these in the background would be really awesome so that's all i'm going to cover today we've talked pretty much about everything in the inspired by nature we haven't looked at all the presets but i'll let you guys do that on your own uh, again you need ableton 11 this is available with ableton 11 uh, I'm not sure if you can buy it separately, but if you can, I definitely recommend it if you're doing a lot of composition, especially and you're looking to create moods. I think this Inspired by Nature collection is really awesome. And I'll remind you again to go to dylanbaston.com and check out the, uh, the manuals for these devices that Dylan put together because I think that they uh, offered me a lot of insight into like what was the intention behind these devices. 
I think that would probably uh, help most, most people watching this as well. So if you have any questions, please post them in the discussion. You can reach out to me directly if you want. And uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, on Friday where we'll pick it up again. All right. Take care.